you just look amazing. I'm just like, can she be any hotter? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good laugh test. Stop oh, it. Yes. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> hey, Songbirds. It is so exciting because today we are breaking down the best songs of the new movie, in the Heights. And yes, I did say we because I'm not doing this on my own. I'm inviting a really good friend of mine and also a colleague, voice and performance coach, Melissa V. Cartwright. How are you going, Mel? Hola, my friend. Thank you so much for inviting me. I cannot wait to start this party. Oh, yes. It's going to be a party indeed. In fact, you used the word <laughs> fiesta. <laughs> Right. Yes, uh, All right. you know. <laughs> so, so, Mel, tell us a little bit about yourself and also why are you, like, the biggest fan of In the Heights? <laughs> well, as you said, I'm a voice and performance coach in Newport News, Virginia, which is on the eastern side of the United States, about mm-hmm. two and a half hours from Washington, D.C. And uh, we basically do private voice lessons, songwriting instruction, uh, performance and audition coaching. We learn how to sing the songs that we love and learn how to do them well and do them for a long time. So good. And In the Heights is, you know, there's some of my favorite songs. And um, this is my favorite Broadway show, actually. I mm. saw it in New York. York. Back when it was on Broadway, I got to see Lynn Manuel Miranda as Usnavi. Yeah. Um, and I knew when I saw that show, I, I had to be a part of it somehow. I am Puerto Rican, and it was such a beautiful representation of Latin culture. Yeah. And fast forward many years later, I actually got to play one of my dream roles as Daniela, the hair oh, salon owner. The feisty so, one. Yeah, the feisty one. In fact, <laughs> I'm wearing the dress that I auditioned in for the role. Whoa, so <laughs> and good. I, this is sort of, this is how I wore my hair actually for Carnaval, oh. you know? So, oh my goodness, I love There's it. so many, yeah, there's just so, there's so many things to love about um, this show and I love the way that um, they made it from stage to screen and yeah. all the adaptations. So I can't wait to get started. Oh, fantastic. You know, I, lo- I love that you're just like, you know, bringing back the nostalgia of, of what you experienced, you know, going to the show, but also being in the show. You know, I love that we get to witness you in this beautiful dress and the hair and everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, without any further ado, Mel, why don't you break down for us your first favorite song from In the Heights movie? Well, I've got to go, of course, with Daniela's biggest song, Carnaval del Barrio. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're going to listen to a little clip of Daphne Ruben Vega, who plays the role in the movie. Awesome. Business is closed and we're about to go. Let's have a carnaval del barrio. All right. So that's the beginning of the song. Yeah. She's basically come up on the rest of the people that she knows and loves in the neighborhood. They're experiencing a blackout, which means no power, no electricity, and no, no AC. So everybody's complaining about how hot it is in the middle of the summer in Washington Heights. And she's like, look, this is probably the last time we're all going to be together. Like, get off your butt, avanza, you know, which avanza means <laughs> hurry. Like, let's right. not mope around. And, you know, to, to later on, this song takes on so many nuances. And, I mean, it's a seven-minute song, right. um, both in the show and in the movie. And so, you know, she, she goes from these very conversational uh, phrases at the beginning, very much like speech-like singing. Uh-huh. And then out of nowhere, she's got a belt out notes like a G4. I think the highest she goes is a B, uh, you know, B4. Um, oh. And then some of the riffing that happens on top of yeah. that song later on. And yeah. so lots of stamina and, and choosing those acting moments where, where am I going to pull back, yep. be more conversational? So yes. then when it's time for... Hey, you know, like to really belt it out. And you so, got to course, belt it, this out, didn't you? When you were in I the show. did, I oh, did. I was so jealous. It was so much fun. I actually, um, Ariel Jacobs, if you know yes. her from yes. Broadway and from Aladdin, she was our Vanessa. Um, oh. So it was amazing to share the stage with her, and wow. and even for her to encourage me. And my interpretation of Daniela, because she wow. closed in the Heights on Broadway. Amazing. Um, and so it, it was just fantastic. Wow. And of course, yeah, just a, a, a seven minute long party. <laughs> uh, 
I absolutely love that. Uh, and so good. You actually got to um, perform this dream role with also a dream cast. I mean, to, to be alongside Ariel Jacobs, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so down to earth and so wonderful, and everybody just just brought it to life. It, it was amazing. Yeah, so good, so good. Well, would you like to hear what my first yes. favorite song is? I'm dying to know. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> All right, so one of my faves is the song "It Won't Be Long Now." Um, it's sung by the character Vanessa um, and um, played by Melissa Barrera. And I just love um, the sweetness of her vocal tone, which is, it just makes it sound so effortless. Look, let me just show you, okay? Without any further yeah, ado, yeah. let's just hear it. Yeah. Mind or no, when I bring back boys, they can't tolerate the noise. And that's okay, because I never let them stay. And I love this day. I love it how she's got this really sweet but strong tone going um, and then she kind of crescendos it into this beautiful belt note. So, you know, um, um, when I bring back boys, they can't tolerate the noise. Like that's really light and, you know, just fun. And then she's like, and one day I'm hopping on an elevator train and I'm flying away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a D5, you know, so it kind of creeps up on you and you don't expect it, Yeah, but it's amazing. I yeah. love it. I love it. I, I, I always, when I first watched it on Broadway, of course, everybody wants to be Vanessa. And yeah. I love Melissa's voice for that reason too. The effortlessness yes. of it, yes. you know, um, and, and I remember Ariel Jacobs doing this too when she played Vanessa. Um, it, that, that, was, that was a D4, I think, you know, and so... Uh, yeah, just her placement and the way she's relaxed. I love. I loved really like watching her on screen. And so, as a vocal coach, you know, we kind of get into this mode of like, yes, <laughs> where we're peering in, and of course, it's a playback or whatever. But then I'm, 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 you know, a lot of times the actor is singing on top of the playback to make it look believable. So yeah. if she was doing that, she did an excellent job. I yes. couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, what I actually love about um, her performance of this is that there's actually a backstory, you know, when she was a lot younger, she'd seen the Broadway show. Um, at, and then she absolutely fell in love with the show, but also the character of Vanessa and sort of in her mind kind of went, I really want to do that role one day um didn't get to do it on Broadway but however then got cast in the movie and I I just love because this whole movie is about going after your dreams and um you know what I mean doing what's on your heart and I just love that even though she's playing a character she's actually gone through that journey herself with getting cast in the movie how cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, in fact, if you like do the whole Google research, you know, on the stories behind the casting process, it really is amazing yeah. just how it was uh, these kismet moments where it, yeah. you know, it was just meant to be yes. for them to do it at this particular time yeah. in their careers, yes. and which, which I think made us fall in love with them even more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and in the movie, she, her dream is that, you know, she's actually working in a hair salon that's owned by, um, sorry, what's her character name? Daniela. 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 How could I forget? <laughs> yes, you know, um, the one that sung the first song that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, she's working for her in a salon and, and, you know, she doesn't mind the job, but it's not her dream job. She wants to be a fashion designer. So, you know, love it, love it, love it, love it. So cool. I love it. She she had to have a lot of paciencia y fe, which means patience and faith. And so that's actually yes. my next one. Oh, that's my so number. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Here's um I you know in when we were doing the show, a lot of us were talking about how this particular show is a show for a lifetime. Right. Meaning there's somebody you know I'd say as young as late teens, early 20s, could go after the Vanessa, the Nina, the Carla, even. Um, and then later on in your adulthood, uh, you could go on to play the Danielas and and even Nina's mom, Camila, um, which we yeah. don't see in the movie, but she yeah. is present in the yeah. show. And then go on to play the matriarch, Abuela Claudia, Grandma yes. Claudia. Yes. Um, and played by Olga Meredis, who originated the role on Broadway. Yeah. I was so happy when I found out that she, they cast her, right? Right. Because 
I mean, talk about stamina. So oh. here at the beginning of the song, this this song is is her reminiscing on her immigration to the United States right. back and from communist Cuba back in the 1940s and 50s, growing up in New York City and and struggling to make it along with her family. And here and all these years later, she is the most esteemed person in the neighborhood. She really takes care of everybody. And so when you see this song, she's taking you on this journey of her yeah. of her childhood yeah. and also on the struggle mm-hmm. and how these words, patience and faith, paciencia y, y fe, take on so many meanings, yeah. you know, throughout the course of the song. Yeah. But I mean, Lynn manuel did an excellent job incorporating the Latin rhythms um, in this. Hi, mama. So many stars in Cuba. This whole, you know, mambo feel. In Nueva York, we can't see beyond our street lights. So right there, she, you know, so soft, so sweet, almost like Daniela. Uh-huh. Street lights, you know, this very spoken, um, what I like to call when I'm teaching my my singers to do a healthy belt is I call it a healthy holler. Yes, you know, I like think that. of that moment that you're frustrated yeah. at somebody and you say, hey, you know, yeah. Yeah. did that hurt? No. Well, it, yeah. you know, comes from that same place. And so yes. here we start to see the anguish that she's reliving. Yeah. And then, of course, what I call the money note. Here we here go, come right. <laughs> Oh, the money note! Woo! All right, Mama. Okay. Paciencia y fe. Oh my goodness! How long does she hold that note for? Like it's forever. <laughs> I think it was sixteen counts. 16 yeah, counts, I think wow. is what I counted. That's amazing. But uh, yeah, just amazing. The stamina. Talk about yeah. breath control, breath support. Um, and I remember even like in the movie and also on the stage version, they're not having, they're not choreographing her doing anything crazy. Yeah. Because she really needs to be grounded, take that breath and just sing it forever in a day. And I mean, yeah. my goodness, I hope one day I can be Abuela Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, when I was watching the movie, because I've never um, gotten to see the stage show like yourself. Um, so the movie was the first time I, you know, saw her performance, I guess, and known of her. And she really stood out to me as one of the best female voices in this whole show. Like, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and, you know, and it's, it's such a... Um, encouragement as well because you sort of go you know and sometimes I sort of have this fear you know when I get older will I be still be able to sing <laughs> and then you look at her and you're like oh yeah <laughs> oh totally I mean that right? that just goes with like you know like kind of like with your motto with your songbirds you know take yeah. flight get grounded and sing and and yeah. what I encourage that my singers that they can do this for a long time you know yes. that's that's why we do what we do and yeah. even for ourselves yeah with you know with good training and good practice mm-hmm. so so that we can do what Absolutely. Olga does and, and sing for sing like that for the rest of our lives that would be amazing amazing <laughs> right so what would you say are the main sort of technical things to kind of um, think about when you're trying to sing something like that and then hold that that beautiful note for 16 bars without wavering, without, you know, how she does it. What do you reckon? Right. So yeah, all, all the exercises that your coaches are telling you to do that build up breath support and stamina, yes. something like I like to tell my singers to do is take in that breath like that, that they do to prep for singing, you yeah. know, big belly breath is what I call it, yeah. but the yeah. diaphragm's lowering yeah. and then, you know, hold out a hiss and see how long you can go yeah and then just practice that every day you know Love like it. even if you're just standing and washing the dishes yeah. eventually <laughs> that'll tra- that'll translate to so good. uh a sustained note before and see how long you can hold that before yes. it starts wavering because yes. you're losing breath yeah. support which is natural you're not yeah. a robot yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then for sure. eventually you add the tone to it uh, yes. you know whether you're straight toning it or vibrato yep. you know so all those good practices of mm. learning to breathe properly which yeah. is yeah that's why we talk so much about it yes is because that'll help you do what she yeah. just did absolutely no I, th- I thought those you know three simple steps that you just outlined for us were fantastic you know and because the thing is it's like when we're actually breathing it for singing the exhale is actually super important and it's about an even exhale it's not about preserving mm-hmm. and holding your breath but it's actually about letting it flow through in an even pace which is then going to help you hold the Hold the note for 16 counts. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So good. I love that example. Thank you for sharing. You bet. You bet. Now, what's your next one? 
Okay, so my next one is um, the song Breathe, which is sung by the character Nina, um, played by Leslie Grace. You know, um, again, you've got another, um, you know, lead girl um, who's young and has that sort of lighter, she uses a lot of light chest and head voice sort of thing, um, but then it doesn't stop her from having moments where she totally hits you in the face um, with, you know, beautiful chest-dominant mixed tones and belt, you know. So let me, let me show you, you know, just one of my favourite parts of this. Um, and I also want to share with you why this song just speaks to me so much. So here it goes. Lots of papers, smile, wave goodbye and pray to the sky. Oh, yeah. So you know what I mean by how she hits you in the face with it? <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. This, is like, this is a fan favorite, but I'm, I'm curious to hear why it speaks to you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, you know, in, in terms of her voice, I really do love um, the lighter sweetness of her voice. It's, it's actually quite different to um, Melissa Barrera's voice. So even though they both sort of share this sort of same kind of, um, uh, I guess, lightness and, and, and all that, um, Leslie Grace's tone is, is slightly different, you know. I think um, it, she just has a different characteristic in the way that she's expressing it. Um, and um, I think, you know, especially in the other song, it's, it's a bit more lighthearted and everything. This one in Leslie Grace's voice, you really hear the heartbreak because she's just come back from university, um, being like the only one in her neighbourhood who's actually been able to go to university. And, and she's mm-hmm. like the neighbourhood sweetheart. They love her so much. They're so proud of her. And they're like so excited to hear all about her university um, journey. And then basically she, her heart is breaking and she's feeling like she's letting everyone down because she's actually dropped out of uni, you know, because of um, circumstances beyond her control. And I relate to that so much because... I used to be in the corporate world, um, you know, doing a career completely different to what I am doing now because I wanted my parents to be proud of me. You know, my parents had come from uh, Vietnam as refugees and they put all their hope on me to kind of, you know, have an education and have a good life and, and, and make it in the world sort of thing, right? But I actually dropped out of the corporate world two and a half years into it and I knew I was so letting my parents down at that point. So, you know, at that end of the song where she just sings that line, I know that I'm letting you down. It's very heartbreaking because she, because I, and I felt exactly the same when I was, um, uh, you know, when I quit my job and I, and I had to tell my mum, like I just knew I was letting her down. You know what I mean? Like, because they'd worked so hard for me to be able to have success, and and, and to them I was experiencing that, so it, they didn't understand why I was going to walk away from that. And 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 of all things, pursue music. <laughs> You know, yeah, so that's that's why I, this song just means so much to me, you know, not only for her vocal qualities and everything, but the, the story of the character and, and how that just, yeah, parallels my own. I know, and I think it's like the power ballad in the song, right? Especially for female voices, mm-hmm. they love singing. I mean, obviously, you know, it spoke yeah. to you, and, and it is such a fun song to sing in terms of just, like, yes. being able to show off. Yes. But I think people resonate with it because yeah. of exactly what you've talked about, you know, yeah. in terms of, like, going after, you know, there's there's – you know, pleasing somebody and then there's following your own dream. Yes, and so yes. yeah, no wonder, no wonder it spoke to you. Yeah. So that's my second, uh, fave song in the movie. How about yours, Mel? What do oh, you have? Oh, okay. We're next. We're about to turn it up just a little bit because right. I love this next song, of course, led by the front man, Usnavi, uh-huh. which Anthony Ramos. Oh my goodness. He was yeah. He, it was like he was made for the role. I Absolutely. think I, there were several interviews I saw with Lin Manuel Miranda where he said, "It felt like I had, I'd written it just for him, yeah. even though you know, you know, Lin originated the role. Yes. Um, he did such a beautiful job. So here's a little clip." Of ninety-six thousand. Awesome. And I could give up with like Claudia the rest of it. Just fly me down to Puerto Plata. I'll make the best of it. You really love this business? No. What's up? Merry Christmas. You not a youngest tycoon in Washington. Yeah. Alright, so here, so you know, the, the watching this on film was spectacular. So they actually filmed this song in a water park in Washington Heights that everybody congregates at. According to director John M. Shu, 
it was also like a high of 50, 60 degrees. So, you know, they were freezing, freezing. you know, yeah. singing and dancing to this song. But again, it, it's, it, everybody's having fun and yes. everybody, this song is all about dreaming about whether or not they won the lottery ticket. They've just gotten the news okay. that somebody won the lottery, mm. which is for $96,000. Mm. So they're all fantasizing about what would I do with the cash if I had it? And yeah. so Usnavi singing to his cousin, Sonny, played by Gregory, Gregory Diaz IV, um, which again, I, I loved I, I, the way they cast the show is beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to say that a lot because it was just so oh, brilliant. Yeah. But Agreed. the reason I chose this song, just from a singing standpoint, I remember Art Usnavi, JJ Caruncho, who's amazing. Um, and he's actually Ariel Jacobs' husband. So yeah. that was fun for them to be each other's lead together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just watching the way he took care of his voice throughout this entire okay. performance process. Because right. I think a lot of vocalists we don't necessarily pay attention to the amount of time we're actually speaking. Right. <laughs> it could be throughout the day until we get to the end of the evening and we're like, oh, my voice is so tired. I really wasn't singing today. Mm. Well, how were you speaking? Right. And so a lot of people don't realize that the stamina and even the placement needed mm. when you're rapping an entire song because yes. there's also different pitches at which he's doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take the best of it, you know, and going up and down, up and down and everything sits like right here in that like high chest, you know, and also having to add a little bit of nasal resonance in yes. order to make sure that, you know, we're not pushing up on that larynx. Yes. And so I, it, I, I guess I never realized until I was actually watching the process yes. just how, um, how much, uh, are, you know, rappers, for instance, like, all those gentlemen in Hamilton, you know, are what they're having to do in order to take care of their voice as yeah. hip hop artists. Yeah. So I thought I, I, that's also why I picked this one, because, yes. you know, if you don't if you don't take care yeah. of even the way you're the inflections you're using, you know, for eight shows a week, you will experience vocal fatigue. Yes. And so. Uh, but then, uh, and then to bring the flavor to it every single time. Yes. To have that energy and interpretation. And also the song is just so fun. It's yes. so fun <laughs> to listen to and to dance to as well. So good, you know, and that's the thing, like I think as singers, we don't actually, um, I guess we underestimate the stamina that is needed for rapping. And I love that you just unpack that. Like they're pretty much kind of like, Semi belting, really, because they're yes. at that sort of edge of their vocal break, and they're Absolutely. just like right at that pitch. Even though they're speaking, mm -hmm. it's still there, and it's like that healthy holler that you were talking about before. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It takes yeah. so much. Absolutely, stamina. and yep. and Usnavi. I mean, there's uh, plenty of other moments in the in the show. He's not, he, so Usnavi's character doesn't have all these ballads, like maybe yeah. like a Benny or somebody like yeah. that has. Yeah, but there are moments where he does get to be more melodic, you know, yeah. and so yeah. then to. Flip the switch, yes. sing, you know, sing the line, come yeah. back, yeah. and then, you know, and continue to interpret. Yes. And so this is really a good practice in vocal rest. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. zipping it after I, I still remember many a time, you know, my my friend just and everybody knew, oh, he's on vocal rest. He's yeah. not being antisocial. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, don't yeah. be afraid of being perceived as antisocial. You're just taking care of your instrument. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, when it comes to um singers and what we actually need to do to, to, to have a healthy instrument and to be able to do what we need to do. So for them, it, you know, it's, it's filming all day, maybe 16, 18 hour days, whatever. They're using their voice constantly. For people on Broadway, it's eight shows a week, right? Um, there's a sacrifice. Like you can't mm -hmm. just, you know, do whatever you want and then, and then expect your voice to perform at its best. You know exactly. I love that. Being yeah, vocal, and, vocal athletes is a term that's being used absolutely. a lot in our world, yes, and so and yes. it's because exactly it's the practice of the of resting just as much as yes. you use yes. it, right? Yes. But you know, I love that you actually brought this example up because also the way that we speak is so important to take note of as singers. Like a lot of the time, we're not we're not maybe we're taking care of the way we sing. 
Like we're very intentional about lifting our soft palate and breathing properly <laughs> and blah, blah, blah when we're singing. And then when we speak, we just speak however. And then we're like, oh, man, my, my voice actually hurts. I didn't sing all day, but I did speak all day. So I love that you brought that up, Mel, because I think technically speaking, to all songbirds that are watching right now, remember that it's the same instrument. So if you are speaking as well as singing, we need to actually use correct vocal technique, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, and you know what? As we were actually um, listening to that clip just now, I'm just watching you and I'm just like, look at her go. She's just having so much fun that it's inspired me, all right, to challenge you about something. Is that cool? Uh-oh. Let's bring something Uh-oh. on you. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how I actually brought up one of my favorite songs being It Won't Be Long Now? Right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of my favorite bits in this song is actually not sung by Vanessa, but actually a rap between Usnavi and Sunny. Right? So, Uh, Usnavi. I know which one. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Let's just have a listen first, okay? And then I'll I'll tell you what the challenge is. (laughs) Yes, que paso, here I go. So, don't be too low, sabe? No pare, sigue, sigue. Did you see me, freaky, freaky? What a way. Oh my gosh, that's seriously probably my favourite rap part in the whole movie, right? And I want to see you attempt it, Mel. Can you give it a go? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, Oh, wait. Dude, Sunny, anything you want is free, man. Oh my God. Uh, Oh my, on the spot. Did you see that? Ah, You can can grab the words up if you want. Don't touch me, I'm too hot. Yes, que paso, here I go. So dope, ni tu lo sabes. No pare, sigue, sigue. Did you see that? Frick it, frick it. Which <laughs> is the best line of the whole <laughs> song. Oh, you're amazing, Mel. Seriously, you're such a good sport. Um, I, I just love that so much. Can, can you tell us what it means? Actually, I would love to know what the yeah, word actually means. So, so no pare, sigue, sigue. You're going to hear that a lot in um, some Latin party songs. It literally means don't stop, um, keep uh-huh. going. So it's the equivalent right. of the don't stop, get it, get it that you've yeah. heard in, in hip hop. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, he's telling him don't stop, get it. Like you finally got a date with the girl of your dreams, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, how many of us have like tried to be the wingman? You know what I mean? Or, or wing woman, <laughs> you know? And, and yes. I think that's why with such a relatable moment, yes. we're like, woo, finally, bro, because you've been sleeping on this, right? So, oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Challenge yeah. accepted. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because <laughs> it's like, it's so funny. Usnavi is such a shy character when it comes to his crush. So like, lovable. you know, Vanessa yeah. walks in the room and he kind of melts in, as, in a puddle and he doesn't know what to say. And then finally, Sunny's like, oh my gosh, I'm just so sick of watching you not ask her out. So I'm going to ask her out for you. <laughs> yeah. And then she yes. says yes. And then they have this party, right? It's so cool. There you it's go. So there you cool. go. Anyway, hey, thanks, Mel. That was <laughs> Sensational. Absolutely sensational. Awesome, awesome. All right, lady, tell me what your next song is. I'm curious. Yeah, so um, my um, next song, next favorite song is Alabanza. Is that how you say it? Yes. Yes, Alabanza. Okay. We've been Alabanza. very good. <laughs> yeah, and um, look, I'm not going to say too much. Let's just have a listen and yeah. then we'll discuss it a little bit. We'll do it. Like seriously, oh, like the way still got I know, right? <laughs> goosebumps, right? And it really is yeah. a massive goosebump moment in the movie. Like I, what I found is that you know it starts very soft, right? It's like mm-hmm. one voice, and then they layer another, and then another, and then another, and then another, and by the end of it, you hear this like layering of multi harmonies and intricate, you know, um, it's it's just so beautiful, um, and it's it's really emotive, you know. I mean, this is a this is a actually a really emotional part of the song, and they're honouring um, Abuela Claudia, mm-hmm. right? And and I believe the word alabanza means praises. Is that right? Or yes, that's like correct. That? It means praise. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And so they're honoring yeah. her, they're praising her because she mm-hmm. was, you know, the grandma of the neighborhood and everyone loved her. She loved everyone and she welcomed everyone into her home. It was like everybody was like her child or grandchild, you know, um, and they're honoring her and it's a celebration. You know, it's a real celebration of a life well lived. And I just love how music can express that so well. It's like you don't need words. You just, you know, the music. And it's just one word, really, that they sing over and (laughs) over again, right? Um, Layering it with gorgeous, intricate harmonies and um, coming to this beautiful climactic moment that just, oh, 
hits your heart. It really, really moves your heart, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I still remember every time we sang this, like if there, if you saw real tears, I mean, these, those were real. I mean, we were moved yeah. by the scene. Um, our Usnavi led us beautifully, you know, in that scene because, you know, he opens it up, you know, with honoring her. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you hear all those layers by the time you get to that moment, um, yes. you know, where you start hearing all the other pieces of the songs and they're, but you know, just like going off and, um, it's, it really is, um, very moving. My yeah. goodness. Our la- when our closing show was mm. like, Lord, help me get through this because, yeah. <laughs> you know, we were all like emotional because we've had such a beautiful experience working on the show together. And then getting yeah. to that moment in the show was just like, Woo, okay, this is why we're professionals, you know, let's, yeah. let's, let's power down and let's do the thing. Yeah. And, um, I still remember a music director, you know, the music director's job, especially when he's teaching ensemble songs is to get us to all blend, you know, but at that point I still, I remember him saying, I don't care what happens. You all need to be doing a full belt basically at that moment, um, in order to capture the intensity of what everybody's feeling as they honor her. And so, um, talk about stamina because this song and the stage version actually comes right after Carnaval. Ah. So we're like, whew, whew, yes. whew, okay, Catch go back breath. out. Yeah. And let's, and, and just it goes to show the power of music. You know, mm-hmm. this is a legato slower yes. power ballad versus yes. the party song we just sang, uh-huh. but still requires the same energy, the same, um, level of control with oh. how much you engage, how much you output Absolutely. <laughs> in order, you know, mm. to, to give a solid performance yes. and a solid vocal performance yes. again, without over exertion, which is so hard. It's, it's yes. hard for uh, us all to master that. Yes. And especially when all the emotions are involved as well. Like it's so easy. I know for myself, if I'm performing on stage and it's a song that's very emotional, uh, it's really easy to strain, you know? Sure. Um, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But also with this song, as I, as I was talking about before, the dynamics, you know, uh, everywhere, right? You start from very soft and it's mm-hmm. piano, right? It's very mm-hmm. soft. And then it moves into uh, mezzo piano and then forte and then mezzo forte. And, so we, and you're getting this beautiful crescendo. But throughout the whole thing, it's not just the big parts and the loud, intense parts that need the vocal control, it is actually the softer parts as well that so often can, Absolutely. you know, you actually need more vocal control. Sometimes it's easier to get away with singing loudly, um, mm-hmm. but you find, but it's very hard to sing softly, but to stay on pitch. And in control. And, and right? control and, and control. not to make it breathy. Mm-hmm. Exactly, right? Yeah. So breath management is key here. Um, and I just feel like because it's such an ensemble piece right like we've got I don't know how many singers doing this at the same time but you're really looking at like multiple singers all you know um showing the same vocal control or whatever because if someone was if someone's sort of out a little bit you're going to hear that because then there's no more vocal blend do you know what I mean sure yeah so I think it's you know overall just such a challenging piece and they would have practiced that for hours (laughs) you know right to get it right yes yes yes. and and to get those harmonies just right and nice and tight beautiful job on the arranging for sure just absolutely gorgeous yes so beautiful oh Mal you know what it has been absolutely the best party like actually having this conversation (laughs) with you Thank you so much for joining us for this. You definitely were the best person to have this chat with. I am so inspired by everything that you shared. Oh, thank you so much. Again, like I, you know, I love this show. It's still my all-time favorite. Um, I would do it again in a heartbeat. And so I was honored when you asked, hey, Mel, do you want to come and do it? I mean, you know, if we we would have been in person, I wouldn't have let you finish your sentence with, I would have interrupted with, yes, absolutely. (laughs) Because I do love this song and I love you and I love what you do and and I love your songbird community. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, Mel, it's such a mutual appreciation society, honestly. (laughs) you know, right back at you. All right. Right back at you. In fact, songbirds, I want you to go and show Mel the love. Go and check out all of her links. They're in the description box below. You can see her website. You can see her YouTube channel. Go and give it a subscribe um, and watch her videos and like them as well. Um, And also follow her on Instagram. Um, You're going to, your life's going to be better, honestly. I mean, you know, (laughs) she's just going to make you laugh. She's going to teach you so many things. You're going to love it. So go and check that out. So once again, Mel, thank you so much for being with us 
today. Um, yeah, you. we're all the more better for it. And uh, <laughs> it's just been such a great party. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Oh, gracias. <laughs> okay, Songbirds, if you enjoyed that chat with me and Mel, you are absolutely going to love my In The Heights sing-off breakdown where I actually compare Leslie Grace and Mandy Gonzalez. Um, you know, Mandy Gonzalez who played uh, the same character, Nina, in the Broadway show and, of course, Leslie Grace who plays it in the movies. Go and check that out right now. And also, if you want to go deeper with your vocal technique, why don't you start your seven-day free trial of the Songbird Tree Vocal Academy? I am always believing in you and I cannot wait to see you there. See ya!